If generalization shows inheritance, then realization shows implementation. In the UML, realization describes a relationship between an interface and a class or a component. An interface is a classifier that defines the attributes, operations, or both that form a cohesive set of features. The interface declares properties and methods, but does not implement them. Instead, the interface is implemented by classes and components. UML refers to the implementation of an interface as realization. So an interface defines a contract for a set of features. The interface as a contract does not realize those features directly. A class realizes an interface's features by implementing them. And the way that we show, or one way you can show an interface in UML, is to use the interface stereotype to extend the concept of a class. And as you recall, you show a stereotype by putting the name of the stereotype, interface in this case, in between angle quotes or guillemets. So let's take a look at how this works. We have our interface here, and let's say our interface is mammal. This interface defines a set of features common to any class that implements the, the interface. So we have attributes like vertebrate and warm-blooded, and we have operations such as breathe, walk, eat, sleep, and so on. Notice that there's no thing out there that's just a mammal that has these features, but there are various classes that implement the features that the mammal interface defines. For example, we have the human class, and all instances of the human class will implement the features defined by the mammal interface. Similarly, all instances of the giraffe class will implement the features defined by the mammal interface. The way that we show a realization relationship between a class and an interface is we use this dotted arrow with a triangular arrowhead pointing from the realizing class back to the interface. That's what it looks like. Now notice, of course, that an interface can and usually will have more than one implementing class associated with it. In addition, a class can implement more than one interface. For example, the human class implements the features defined in the mammal interface, but if we had another interface, we'll call it biped, and let's say the biped interface has an operation called walk on two legs, the human class implements the features defined by the biped interface as well as the features defined by the mammal interface. So we can show the relationship like that. So the human class implements features defined by both of these interfaces, whereas the giraffe class implements only the features that we've defined in the mammal interface. Now this is one way to show a realization relationship uh, using the interface stereotype with a classifier box and these dashed arrowheads. There's another way, and you can see that right here. This is how we had it designed in the other diagram. We have the interface stereotype for mammal, and then we have two classes, human and giraffe. But these circular symbols also indicate an interface. So you can show a realization relationship either using the dashed triangular headed arrow and a classifier box with the interface stereotype, or you can use this circular interface symbol and just use a simple association line to connect it to the implementing class. So again, we have the same information in this diagram. The human class implements the features of both the mammal interface and the biped interface. Notice you have to label your interface symbol. The giraffe class implements the features of both the mammal interface and the quadruped interface. So this shows the same information as the previous diagram. The notation that you choose depends on what you want to show in your diagram. If you want to give details of the interface in the diagram, use the interface stereotype in the classifier box. If you have your interface defined elsewhere and you want to keep your diagram pretty simple, then use the interface symbol of the circle to show your interfaces.